Hello everybody, welcome to a fairly chilly porch in St. Paul, Minnesota. I am Chip Walton, welcome to Chop and Brew. I am here with the one and only... Michael Dawson. The author of... Mashmaker. But we're not talking about a beer from Mashmaker today, are Heck we? Heck no. Tell us what we are talking about. We're talking about the Snaz Project Dry Hop Fruited Unicorn Sour. Bam! This was a beer that came about uh, not uh, because I thought of it, but uh, because it was it was kind of created to backfill a concept that was already in the works. Uh, the Growler uh, was doing a collaborative brew with Eric Stolhansky, Minnesota native uh, from Broken Lizard. AKA uh, Rabbit. Yep. From um, Super Troopers. And the forthcoming Super Troopers 2. Uh, they really wanted to do a snozberry beer, <laughs> but there are already a couple commercial breweries making a beer with some snozberry reference in the name. So they had to kind of go a different route for the production batch. They still wanted to do a snozberry. Uh, that's why they hit me up. Homebrew recipe, fly under the copyright trademark <laughs> radar. Yeah. Yeah. They said to me, make a snozberry beer. We're going to shoot this in 10 days. <laughs> and I was like, all right. What fourth was born? Uh, I had to consult my daughter. Yeah. She asked, mm -hmm. uh, or I asked her, what what, what would you put in a snozberry beer? Mm -hmm. And after some, uh, some kind of real talk and uh, some shaming of her father for not brewing a, a lager or a pilsner, <laughs> I was really proud. Uh, she suggested fruit, and it has to be really over the top and uh, earn its name. Earn its name. Earn the ridiculousness of its name, uh, to kind of paraphrase the way she put it. So, uh, I had some Barca Pilsner, some Idaho 7 hops. I thought I'd do sour, dry hop, put some fruit in it. That gets us most of the way there, but then edible glitter is what really makes it ridiculous. Uh, this is Candorin Silver Luster. L-U-S-T-R-E, so you know it's fancy, and it gives it this kind of like opalescent sheen. <laughs> um, it's kind of settled out now. There's like yeah, glitter ball at the bottom. Yeah. So, so that last swig is going to be... Maybe leave that behind. <laughs> oh, whoa. Ooh. The swirls, man. <laughs> Fractals. Oh, look at that. It is pretty mesmerizing. That is cool. In that taller glass, it plays a lot longer. Someone give me a yard. I need a boot. What I what I was able to find on short notice was a blend of passion fruit and pear <laughs> juice. I get lots of passion fruit, but there there is a little bit of kind of like cidery undercurrent, I think, that's probably coming from the, the pear. If I had more time to source some pure passion fruit or uh, oh. even the whole fruit, that would be a worthy experiment for a, a follow-up. I just swirl it up. Yeah. It gets, a, it gets that silver swirl again. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so cool. Um, so we'll post the recipe, the link to the Growler's recipe that Mike did. Um, but it's kettle soured. The mm -hmm. fruit juice went in into primary. Mm -hmm. And then dry hops about also, when? Also in primary. Oh. Like three days into, into the the Saccharomyces fermentation. Nice. Yeah. You noted that you get a difference between the two, just well, in case people this, do or don't use This glitter. beer is 15 days old today, uh, so it's still pretty young. When uh, we did the initial shoot with, with Eric and the guys at the Growler, I noticed that the hop flavor seemed to be diminished in the beer that had been dosed with the glitter. I brought a control yeah. plus the glitterified beer for us to see if that that phenomenon has held up. I do feel like this one's brighter, a little more bitter. It could almost be more acidic. So maybe there's that lacto um, kind of coming into play a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's weird to think that glitter would subdue that, but edible glitter be edible glitter. It's a mystery. <laughs> 
with very few vital specs, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, when anytime you're messing with magic and wizard <laughs> stuff like that, uh, yeah. the results are liable to be unpredictable. I agree. I think this one's brighter. I get more of the whirlpool and dry hops out of this one, and probably, yeah, a little more of that lacto brightness. But this one will freak people out. This looks like a New England IPA meets unfiltered grapefruit juice. And it doesn't actually taste too far removed from grapefruit in a very strange way. Right. I've it's... never had passion fruit on its own. You hear it name dropped a lot in descriptors of hops when mm -hmm. people are judging a beer. But mm -hmm. I think it's more tart um, okay. and kind of tropical, kind of, uh, kind of along the lines of like guava, mango. So which one do you like better? Um... You know, just for visual entertainment, it's pretty hard to beat yeah. the glitter bombed. And it version. doesn't taste like like you push the mute button. It just doesn't taste quite right. as bright. But I think if I was gonna have a couple, I would I would choose the on glittered version just because it's it's kind of like a sour pale ale, um, you know, okay. a fruity sour pale ale. Yeah. Because I get I get more of that hop flavor, a little more pine from those those Idaho sevens. If people want to run with the Snaz project but put their own twist on it, what else could you see working well hop-wise or fruit-wise? I, uh, I was almost going to use Mosaic in this. Um, I, I think, personally, I prefer Mosaic to Idaho 7, just strictly subjective. But I had some really good Idaho 7 on hand and I thought I should use them. Um, and I think it works in this beer, but I'd be really curious to hear uh, if people do it with Mosaic. Uh, what that would what that would be like. I think you could go nuts with the fruit on this too. Um, we were talking off camera a little bit about, I, I, I was in a time crunch and what I was able to find on shorthand was a blended juice, but I think pure passion fruit would be pretty interesting. Um, we were also talking with Elsa off camera about how like, this beer would be pretty cool if it was purple. She and if I had, it to be purple, right? If I had had some frozen blueberries or something on hand, I would have uh, would have chucked those in. And Barrel Theory kind of took this in a whole other direction. They did a blueberry maple syrup, maple porter, I believe. Okay. It's, yeah. So yeah. they dropped the sour part out and ran with the berry and the syrup, and which the, has like a, a role in the movie. And the maple syrup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, man, Super Troopers 2 comes out April 20th. It'd be pretty awesome if you guys got a brew in to the kettle and into the bucket or carboy and celebrate by raising a glass of this. If you do, definitely tag us at Chop and Brew. Shout out to Eric Stolhansky, The Growler, Grey Duck Media, uh, a dude, a fan named Ken Forey who lives in Mesa, who sent me this swag Mesa Fire Department. He's going on 35 okay. years. Uh, pretty soon here on the Mesa Fire Department, so that's epic. So a lot of love going on in this tasting session. All right. So let us know how your snaz goes, and uh, until then, snaz for snaz, man. Uh, shop for snaz. Snaz. <laughs> Something. I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> You're sure this is edible glitter, right? Uh. I've had a uh, uh, my portion of a growler with no uh, ill effects. How's it look on the way out? I got one. <laughs> no <laughs> ill effects. <laughs> Movements have been surprisingly non-magical oh. ever since. So yeah, I'm I'm not worried. <laughs>
The what was Snazberry? Well, what was the reference? You're like, the internet has its own idea. Is there a very urban dictionary take? It's like urban dictionary, but like from 50 years ago, Roald Dahl uh, wrote it into Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh-huh. The snozberries taste like snozberries. <laughs> years later, he used that same line in a non-kids book, in an adult book, and it oh. was double entendre euphemism kind of thing. Who's got the snozberry, a man or a lady? It's a uh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blue for real! Yeah. I think that was good, right? Yeah. I mean, when anytime you're messing with magic and wizard <laughs> stuff like that, uh, yeah. the results are liable to be unpredictable.